Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of Electric Classic Cars Workshop Walkarounds. I've got my buddy Spud here. Say hello Spuddy! And we've got this beautiful 1970 Fiat 500 to show you around this week. Well, you've also noticed I've got my radio mic and a hat because I've not had a haircut in about three months because of the coronavirus lockdown. Right, let's take you around this little beauty of a Fiat 500. So, this is a typical customer type conversion where the customer brings us the car already pre-restored we don't have to do any work to the car at all we just need to concentrate on the actual electric conversion side of things and what we really like about the Fiat 500s is we've got a great little bolt-in kit conversion already designed up for it so it's a fairly simple process for us and probably I'd say one of the most popular cars we actually get to convert here at Electric Classic Cars so let's take you around some of the details of the actual conversion itself. While I'm at here, you'll notice I'm not going to take it around any of the restoration sort of things because we've not done any of that. It's just purely electrification. So one thing we have changed is the front badge here. So this didn't come in with this front badge, did it, Spud? No. What we've done is put this badge in here, but the reason being underneath is the charge point. So if you come a little bit closer, you'll see that. So one of the challenges we had with the Fiat 500s when we came to do the first one about five years ago was where are we going to put the charge socket? Because usually we put the charge socket where the petrol filler cap is. But that's actually underneath the boot in this case. So just like on early VWs, the actual petrol tank is in the front here and the actual filler to fill it up is in the front. So you actually have to lift this up to fill it up. That's fine for petrol. But when you've got a charge point where essentially you can have a cable just running out of the car for hours on end and you might be in the house and charge up overnight, having an open front or an open rear or whatever um, while it's charging up isn't really a good idea. So we had to come up with a, a novel solution as to where we're going to put that charge point. So what we came up with is just fitting it underneath this Fiat badge at the front here. So underneath here is the Type 2 charge point. So a nifty little trick of just hiding that charge socket out of the way so people don't even know where it is. I like little things like that. Right, let's have a look at the front of this thing. Or as Americans call it, the frunk. So in here used to sit the smelly old petrol tank. So any shopping that he did have and managed to cram in the very small boot used to come out stinking of petrol. So now we've actually got rid of that petrol tank, there's actually more luggage space now in the electric Fiat 500 than there was when it was petrol. So there's not really much to see in here, we've just carpeted this area, kept it pretty simple, haven't really touched the original wiring that's up there, we've got a front battery in here, we've got the charge point there, so that's really about it. It's quite practical compared to a petrol one, as I say, because there's more luggage space up front now. One of the things I love about the Fiat 500s is just the minimalistic look of the interiors. So what more do you need? I mean, you've got a speedo here, you've got some switches for things like indicators, windscreen wipers, etc. It's kind of all you need. Um, the customers actually uh, put this retro looking stereo system in, so we thought the ideal place for the actual state of charge meter would be next to that. Put a chrome bezel around it just to sort of like blend it in with the rest of the interior, but it's not really much to see in the interior, which is how I like it really. Nice and simple and elegant. Right, let's have a look at the business end of this thing. So in here is essentially most of the electric conversion side of things. We've got one battery up front as well. Uh, we've got two Tesla batteries in here. So that's a total of about 15 kilowatt hours of energy, which will give you about 50 mile range um, on main A roads going about 55 miles an hour, probably about 75 mile range in the city. And this really, this car is designed for city use. So you probably would struggle to do about 75 miles a week, if not in two weeks in places like London. So 15 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, we've got the charger here, the motor underneath, uh, controller over there. This charger is about 2.5 kilowatt charger, which is quite, a slow charger but that's because the battery pack is so small so you've got 15 kilowatt hours 2.5 kilowatt hour battery pack so that's going to charge it up in about six hours so it's designed to charge up overnight 
Rapid charging isn't really an option on this because uh, the voltage is so low. We've got about a 68 volt nominal voltage on these things, which is too low for rapid DC charging. So the maximum charging we can go up to is probably around about uh, 7 kilowatts. But 2.5 kilowatts is fine on these things. They're not designed to be dri driven up to Edinburgh and back and charging up on the way as well because it just take too long. So 2.5 charger which can be charged up off three, three pin plug is absolutely fine or obviously off any type 2 charger. Um, weight wise this actually ends up being around about I think it's 30 maybe 40 kilos max heavier but weight distribution is actually much better because you've got a little bit of weight up front with a front battery pack so it adds a little bit of weight maybe the weight of a small child but that's about it so here we have the mighty Fiat 500 engine this weighs in at about 60 kilos which is about the same as you eat per day isn't it spud so we've got about a whopping 13 or maybe 14 horsepower out of this thing so that's 60 kilos 13 horsepower versus the electric motor which is about 27 kilos and 45 horsepower so half the weight and about three and a half times the power so that's the old technology old hundred year technology let's have a look at the modern motor and you'll get a good comparison then uh, as to the size difference of these things Okay, so from this shot gives you a great angle of the actual motor itself. So bear in mind this is what three and a half times more power than that petrol motor and look at the size of it. I'll give my hand, I've not exactly got big hands. So that's kind of the size of it. It's a HPEV's AC20 motor, 75 volt system. Um, this is the adapter plate, so the motor actually bolts to an adapter plate, which then bolts to the original gearbox. And I'll run you through what it's like to drive an electric motor uh, using an original gearbox uh, later on because we'll be taking this car out for a spin. Um, this is the motor cradle, which I'll run you through in a minute as we go through some of the kit components. Um, so as I say, this is 45 horsepower, it's about uh, 70 pound foot of torque as well. So it's a hefty little motor for a little car of this size. And I wouldn't call it a sports car, performance but it's definitely nippy. So that's the motor itself. Uh, it's an AC induction motor so you've got regen and things like that in it as well. Um, so I think now we'll just take a look at the major components in the actual kit and take the engine lid off the uh, car so we can have a good look around. That's better. Now we can see what we're doing. I've got the engine lid off now so most of the components are on show here. I've run you through some of them already like the battery box and the charger. So if you imagine once you've dropped that engine out, you've got a big cavern of space in here um, with a gearbox sort of showing down there. The first thing you've got to put in is going to be that end, uh, the motor with the adapter plates and I've got the actual cradle here. So that cradle uh, bolts in underneath and actually attaches to two big hefty bolts down here. So that's kind of your, your motor is then in and then once your motor's in, you can put your side plates in. So these are big, hefty aluminium side plates that actually mount in various different places around the engine bay and just solidly holds everything on top then. So that then goes in there and then you can start putting the rest in. So the battery box is actually the last thing to go in. So the first thing, if you like, is going to be things like your electrical box so that's going to have things like contactors uh, fuses bits and pieces like that in you've then got your Curtis controller so that'll sit roughly around about there so that's down there what else we've got we've got a charger in here so let's just put the, oh, sit about there then you've got your charger so that sits around about there and then over on this side you've got a radiator and some fans just to cool down that controller because the controller actually gets fairly warm and needs cooling down so you've got a coolant plate underneath that just takes some coolant through there, gets rid of the heat through the radiator and fans here. The motor's actually air cooled so that doesn't actually need to be cooled down. And then obviously we've got your battery box here so the battery box then sits over the top of it so if I just, it's empty thank god because I can lift it so that kind of sits roughly move that out of the way 
roughly around about there. Obviously that slides in, bolts in place, and then the last thing that goes in is the actual charger itself. So that's some of the main elements in our Fiat 500 kit. And just uh, over there is the front battery box, which again is a fairly simple bolt-in system. And then it's just down to things like your isolator, your main cabling, obviously you've got to put in, um, and then seal the boxes up. So we use marine grade sealant around the battery boxes as well, just to give it some additional uh, sealant uh, from the, the British weather. So that's pretty much it really. So I think the next thing we'll take it out for a spin. Right. So, unlike the last episode where it was pretty much static, just walk around, we're going to take this baby for a spin. So, first things first, how do you start an electric uh, classic car? Like this. Ta-da! So what we've got, we've just got a little red light come on on the uh, what is generat, so generator uh, light on the dashboards come on just to show you the car's on because obviously there's not much noise. So we're all good to go. That's literally it. So handbrake off. It's already in third gear and you just put your foot down. It's as simple as that. So it's go and stop. Go and stop. And there endeth the lesson in how to drive an electric classic car. Right, let's take it out for a spin. So third gear starts off. You don't have to dip the clutch or anything like that. In fact, when you come up to a stop, you can actually change gear without even dipping the clutch because the motor's actually not turning. So if we're going to park this car, that's reverse. I haven't even touched the clutch, I've just literally just changed gear and put my foot down and we're going backwards. Put your foot on the brake, stop, put it in third, and away we go again. It's as simple as that. Right, in case you can hear any strange snorting noises, that's not my stomach rumbling because I'm hungry. It's actually spud in the back seat. So here I'm actually coming to a junction and I haven't even put my foot on the brake. I'm just holding it on the accelerator. That's how easy it is to drive these things. So, and again, in third gear, we're just setting off. Simple. I've got a gauge down here, which I'll show you in a minute, some close-ups of that. Again, coming up to a junction. I'm just going to put my foot slightly on the brake. We've got, we've got regenerative braking and we've got a door that's slightly open. There we go. Okay, so off we go. So I've got two modes on this, um, sport mode and eco mode. Actually, sport mode is the wrong word for a, this kind of car. Let's call it nippy mode and eco mode. So again, I'm still in third gear and third gear will do fine all the way from zero up to probably about 50 maybe even 60 miles an hour so you don't really need to change gear although you can change gear you can use the clutch when you're driving and change it into fourth gear or whatever gear you want if you like in fact i'll just show you that coming up to a junction again i've just put my foot on the brake i haven't even done anything clutch wise put my foot on the brake and then put my foot on the accelerator again it's, it's very similar to driving an automatic. Um, so I'll just ch show you a gear change. So you can use the clutch to change gear. So if you're driving at more than 60 miles an hour, let's say on the motorway, you can actually put your foot on the clutch, put it into fourth gear, and away you go again. So it's a real kind of combo of an automatic and a manual. But in realistic terms, driving it around town, you'll just leave it in third gear, probably most of the time I'd say. So as you can see the state of charge meter is showing it's got about 95% left in the battery and if we just go through to amps so amps is showing how much we're pulling out the motor and if I just flick it into eco mode and come up to a junction you'll see it'll go positive so if I come off the accelerator it should go positive to there you go, so it's putting about 27 odd amps back into the motor there as we're just decelerating, it, decelerating up to this junction. And just coming up to a stop. 
So eco mode gives you a little bit more range because essentially what it's doing is softening up the acceleration curve and it's giving you more regenerative braking effect. Whereas sport mode or nippy mode, whatever you want to call it in this car, it's giving you a nice bit of acceleration and a little bit less regen as well. So I think that's about it for this episode. Back to the workshop we go. So I hope you liked it. I hope uh, answered quite a few of the questions that you might have in your mind about how to drive an electric classic car. Uh, if not, or if there's any other questions you might have, put some comments down below and I'll try and answer them and uh, any other things that you might want to get covered in future episodes and maybe suggest which car we're going to do next. All right, thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you on the next episode of uh, Electric Classic Cars Workshop Walkarounds.